Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be covering lesson two of my drill through masterclass. And I'll be looking at how you create a drill through between two PBIX files. So you've got the original file and you want to drill through into a list of work orders or any details, but that drill through is in a tab on a separate PBIX file. Okay, so let's get started. So just to cover the big picture, I've put this little slide together here, and it covers the the, the, the four steps that we're going to um, we're going to take to go and, and set this up. So in the middle here, we can see that we've got two files here. We've got drill through masterclass work order details, different file. Quite a mouthful, but it, it is what it says in the tin there, and that's going to be our original report. And we're going to go and set up a drill through so that we can look at the work order details tab carrying across the filters but on a different p by x file okay and there's four steps to setting this up so the first step is that we're going to go and set up a configuration option on the original file to allow it to access other files as a, as a drill through target the second step is that we're going to set up a, a tab on or a, just a wee toggle button on the, the, the target file to make sure that it can be accepted and can be used as a drill through target. Then we're going to add the drill through fields themselves to the, the work order details or the target file. And then finally, we're going to publish both of these files up to the Power BI service. And we're going to make sure that we can, we're going to do a bit of testing to make sure the two files are, are, are linked up there. So one of the key things here that I, I just need to cover really quickly is that when you are setting up a drill through, target you need to make sure that the the column name and the, the 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 actual table in the column name are exactly the same in both of the actual files or the measure name we're going to probably use measures are exactly the same in both files okay so that's really important and i just want to cover that up front okay so let's get started okay i'm in the original file here so i'm going to go and set up a configuration option here so we're going to go to file we're going to go to Options and Settings, Options. And then we're going to scroll to the bottom here to Report Settings. And we're going to tick this little box here. Allow visuals in this report to use drill through targets from other reports. OK, so that's step number one. Then we're going to go in and navigate to the target file. And I'm going to go and check this toggle here, Cross Report. So drill th under the Drill Through section, in the, the fields section here. I'm going to click on this button here. Okay, and that's the second step. Now the third step is to add the, the drill through fields. Now I do cover this in a lot more detail in the first lesson, which I'll leave a link to below. But essentially what we're going to do is put in the fields here, or the measures in this instance, that we're going to enable a drill through for. So that, what that means in reality is that in the original report, if that measure name, or the column name is used in a visualization, then it will enable a drill through to this particular tab on this report. So let's go into work order details and we're going to enable it for the, the measure called backlog count and we're going to enable it for backlog hours. Okay, so any visual that has got the backlog count or the backlog hours displayed as a measure, aggregate, well, aggregated as a measure, is going to be um activated and we're going to be able to drill through to this report here so that is the the third step the fourth step is to publish this up to the power bi service so we're going to click the publish button here it's going to ask if we want to save it and i've set up a workspace here called backlog analysis and i'm going to replace the existing one okay so that's a success that's published up Let's go to the next one, and I'm just going to go and publish that. And the most must exist in the same workspace, so we're going to go to backlog analysis again. Okay, so that's a success as well. So that is fine. Okay, so I'm over in the Power BI service, so let's go into our backlog analysis workspace here. And in fact, open this workspace. Let's go backlog analysis workspace. 
and we can see I've already created an app. Now I don't have this video I set with the scope of this video to talk about the service and setting up apps, etc. But just a couple of things to bear in mind. Um, so these are the these are the files that are in the app. We've got to make sure this is the reports and this is the data set. Now you've got to make sure that this report is included in the app. Okay, just make sure it's included in the app. It will be by default, so it shouldn't be an issue, but just make sure that toggle button is on. So we're just going to go and update the app. And that is fine. And go to app. And here we can see we've got our front page. So let's see if this works. So we want to go and see the, the detail behind this figure here, this 8046 hours. So let's go to drill through and we can see that that drill through has now been enabled and we can see that the drill through is to the work order details list, a work order list report and the work order details tab within that report. That's what that in brackets means there. And we can see that it's 846 um, work order, 8046 work orders and 194 hours sorry and 194 work orders so it's working and we can see the discipline department have been filtered by mechanical and by maintenance and if you open up the filters at the side you can see here that we've got the department maintenance and the discipline is mechanical so that all seems to be working fine there's one thing here just to consider and it's that that back button has been added in as a default whenever you add in a drill through to a target report it will automatically add a back, a back button. So Power Bear will add this back button in. And the reason for that back button is to allow you to navigate back to the previous tab. And if you have a drill through that's on the same PBIX file, that works perfectly fine. Okay, you can use a drill through and it'll, the back button and it'll just drill, it'll just take you back to the previous page, which was the originating page on the on the pbix file however if you've got this set up here where you've got a drill through that exists in a different pbix file then this back button doesn't work okay how you navigate back is simply by using the the back button here on the, the browser okay so we can go and delete that back button because it's not any use so let's just drill through again and i'm going to go and delete that button okay so I'm back in here in the, the work order details tab and I'm just going to click on here, delete bu delete the button and then I'm going to publish this back up to the service and then um, we'll see it appear in the, in the app. Okay, so I've published this up here and I just need to go and refresh the, uh, update the app. So click this button here, click update app, click update app. And then we'll just go to this front page again. And if I navigate through to say, look at this 26 safety critical work orders, we can see that button's gone. Okay, so it just tidies up a little bit. Okay, the next one, and this is something that um, that's worth looking at if you've got a particular setup where you want to create a drill through from a card which doesn't have any filters on it. Okay, so these cards here have got filters. So if I hover above here, we can see that's got a filter for work criticality equals one, which represents the safety critical work. This one's got a filter for work criticality equals three. This one is two, etc. So these have got filters. So if I click through into, say for example, this one here, which is going to be looking at anything for priority four, it's going to filter for priority four. If I go back and then a filter for anything that's related to safety, it's going to overwrite the previous filters that were on priority four, which is the behavior you would expect. However, if you note these 26 work orders here, if I drill through from this card here, which is no filters, okay, there's no filters on this card here because it's just displaying all of the work orders in backlog and all of the hours related to those work orders in backlog. The drill through is enabled, but it doesn't take the filters with it. So it seems to be some sort of um, logic that means that because there's no filters, it doesn't overwrite the filters as it as it as it cascades through to the actual target report. So to work around that, what you need to do is find a field that you can filter that um, that card by. That's not going to impact the fact that it's displaying every value. So let's go back into our PBX file. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to go in here and I've 
I'm going to search for a field called site. In fact, I haven't added it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a field that is something that isn't going to affect the filter. So it's something that's common to every single one of the, the rows. And it could just be a, a drill through assist with a number one in it. It doesn't really make much difference. It's just something that we can use as a drill through so that when something we can use as a filter that's not going to impact the figure, but is going to instigate an overwrite of the filters when we actually go and drill through into that um, that separate PBX file. So in this example here, I'm just going to go and add a new column to the work order data table. And I'm going to call this site, okay? Because I, I know that in this example here, all of the the work orders are related to one single site, okay? So it, if, if you've got multiple sites being displayed and you can't use site, you need to use something else like company, for example. So I'm going to call this alpha. And you might even want to put a note beside it to say that this is really you know, a redundant field to create to assist with the drill through. So I'm going to create that in this one here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply that to these, these visuals here. So let's go and find site. And I'm going to add it on here. And I'm just going to select that as being alpha. Okay, so that's not going to make an, it's not going to impact anything else. It's just going to it's still going to show every uh, all 746 of these work orders because it's related to every 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 record in the table. Okay, so these are both selected. That's great. And I need to do the same, or I need to add this site equals alpha to the target report as well. Okay, so it needs to be a it needs to be a um, an ex a column in the target report. So let's go into the target report and I'll just check I've added it in. Oh yeah, okay, I've already added it in here. Okay, site equals alpha. And that is all we need to do. Okay, so publishes both up to the Power BI service. Okay, so these are both, these reports are now published back up to the Power BI service and we can see here that site equals alpha has been applied to each one of these. Okay, so these have got a filter now. So that filter is going to override any existing filters that existed from the previous drill through. So just to test that, let's drill through and look at our work order so that are related to safety critical work and we can see there's 26 there. So now if we want to look at this 745 work orders and we drill through, we can see the filters are overridden. Okay, and the reason for that is because it's now filling in for this common um, column here, which is site equals alpha. Okay, so that's a workaround to make sure that the cards, which have got no pre exit and no filters on them, or you don't want to have any filters on them, um, will actually work for the, the drill through. So the next thing we want to do is actually go and hide this work order details. Now, the reason for that is that if I drill through to, say, for example, look at this 56 work orders here, that's fine. Now, if I then, rather than navigate back using the back button, if I then just click on this um, this tab here to look at the file that just is the, the home page, the original page, um, and then I want to go back and look at this work order details. Now, it may be that um, I'm a, or it could be a little bit of confusion as to what's actually getting filtered here. Okay, so you can go and you can see this has been pre-filtered and, and that's fine. And if you do want to use this as a standalone report that you want to just apply some filters to, then great. But just if you want to keep it nice and neat and only be able to access this work order details report from this original report, and a drill through from this original report, then you can go and hide this here. Okay, so to do that, go to edit app, go to update app, go to navigation, and you can click this little button here. Okay, so it needs to be part of this app, it needs to be in here for this to be able to drill through to it, but you can hide it from the navigation. Okay, so that's a, another option there. It just helps keep it nice and tidy. So now we can go back here and we can see that it is missing from the site here. 
Okay, so that is setting up navigation from one PBX file, or drill through from one PBIX file to a detailed report in another PBIX file. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, one of the reasons is for ease of keeping a standard list of details. So in this example here, you might want to keep a standard list of work orders. So let's just drill through here. And you might want to say, okay, well, this is a standard list of work orders and we might have two or three different reports or even more that all want to drill through and look at that same work order details tab or take advantage of that same work order details tab. So you could have a report that's looking at backlog. You could have a report that's looking at any work that's been scheduled. You could have a report that's looking at some cost. So you could have multiple different original reports that all need to drill through and look at a list of work orders and you only need to maintain it in one place. So that's the advantage. Now that advantage could also be a disadvantage because if you want to change the, the layout of this work order report, perhaps you want to add some fields or remove some fields, then obviously that's going to impact all of the reports that this um, this target report uses as a, as a target for a drill through. But certainly a consideration if you've got a standard list that you want to use and you want to make it easy to maintain that rather than create separate tabs on four or five different reports. So hopefully you can um, you found this useful. Hopefully you can apply this in your own organization. If you did find it useful, then it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, I tend to release one more or less every week, then click the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever I release a video. So thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.